everyone, I'm Kenneth Martin, and I welcome you again to this broadcast. Um, as you know, if you've been following me, I'm teaching on righteousness. Let me adjust the camera just a touch. Okay, there we go. And righteousness, you might be thinking, well, Pastor Ken, this is kind of an untimely subject. I mean, you know, we maybe should be teaching on healing or Psalms 91 or the authority of the believer or something because we're in a crisis here. Well, actually, I am. I am teaching you this. I am teaching on those things. Actually, I'm teaching on something that's even greater and stronger. Believe it or not, righteousness is a spiritual strength that'll cause you to walk in authority. It'll produce protection. It will produce the strength to inherit your promises. Amen. It actually is the greatest blessing of being born again because it is the life and the nature of God coming to life inside of you. As we develop, and I teach on this, or you, you learn and you meditate these things on righteousness, it is, it is producing a strength on the inside of you that it cause you to stand up. The, the word says the righteous are as bold as the lion. See, we've not been given a spirit of timidity or fear. That's the reciprocal. That comes from an unrighteous consciousness. This righteous consciousness is what I'm attempting to build inside of you, is what will cause you to inherit and walk in the authority that God has given us. See, this life and nature of God and what makes us the greatest blessing of being born again is because it puts us in fellowship with God. It's the greatest honor ever conferred upon man that we could fellowship with him. And as you know, Christianity is a relationship. Well, you can be in relationship or related to somebody, but no fellowship. It's like a marriage. A marriage without fellowship is like a marriage without love. So, you know, and it's fellowship is the source and the joy of peace. And it's the mother of faith. Think about a husband and wife when Fellowship is cut off. Let's say strife or something comes in. I mean, hey, your joy just goes right out the window, man. See, so fellowship is a source of all joy. And righteousness establishes fellowship. Even though you've been made the righteousness of God, you may not be in fellowship with him. Not least not to the level that he desires or the level that he's called us to. I'm really amazed at how many people, Christians, and they love God, but they don't know God. Well, how do you get to know somebody? Fellowship. Fellowship. Well, this righteousness, or let me say, righteousness puts us in right standing with God. It gives us rights and privileges with God. Because it opens a door to our faith. It opens a door to fellowship. It is more than just having rights and privileges with God. It is actually a strength that makes you bold. You have confidence and assurance. It's doing the work. Righteous, go ahead and be looking it up in Isaiah 32. Get your Bible and read it. I mean, I'm going to go there with you and because it's good that you honor the word enough to open your Bible and read it, get it before your eyes, let it get in your ears so it'll make a deposit in your heart. Righteousness will make you bold and confident. It gives you a surety. It, it also causes you to stand up in authority and to walk in power. It's the life and the nature. God is a ruler. God is a king. God is a God. See, and it's his nature. He don't lose at nothing. Hmm. And righteousness 
gives us these privileges and this nature on the inside of us. Rights and privileges. Now I'm going to make a statement here. I want you to take note of it because it is an absolute truth. When you begin to take your place and assume your rights and privileges in Christ, then, then, you hear me? Then God will respond to you and the word will give us our inheritance. Think about it in the simplest form. Okay, you heard the word of salvation, of getting born again. Open up at a privilege or an opportunity. When you begin to assume your, that privilege is, or you, you, you accepted it and begin to walk in it, accept it, I'm going to take it. God responded and the word went to work and gave you a new spirit, recreated you. Well, that's the same way we're going to progress and grow in God. But we ha if, what happens when we don't stand up and assume our rights and privileges. Well, just like it was before you got born again. You could have not assumed the privilege to be born again and went on and still not got born again, never experienced salvation. But until you begin to assume and stand up, take your place, well, we're supposed to grow in this righteousness. We've been made the righteousness of God, but we have to develop it and let it strengthen us on the inside of us. Have you ever heard uh, somebody making the comment, oh, don't you have any backbone? You need some backbone in you. Well, that's what righteousness does. It gives you a backbone. It is the backbone of faith, man. It is the strength that will cause you to stand up and take your inheritance. Glory to God. Now, what we're up against, though, is a sin consciousness or a condemning consciousness. Condem when sin came in, condemnation, condemnation came in with it. And condemnation makes you feel unworthy, inadequate, um, not able to achieve, makes you draw back. Think about it with Adam and Eve in the garden. I mean, they had they had right fellowship with God. As soon as sin came in, the condemnation came in, and they what? They drew back. They hid. What was confidence and assurance became fear. They're now withdrawing from God. The Bible tells in Hebrew, don't, he has no pleasure in those who draw back. Don't draw back. That's a sin consciousness doing that. Well, righteousness gives you the ability to stand before an almighty God with no sense of inferiority or guilt or condemnation. I don't know um, about you. Uh, while I know it's been working, I, I, I don't can't think of any other subject I have faced so much spiritual resistance from the adversary on. Because once this gets established in you and in your consciousness, it'll open the door to your fellowship. It'll open the door to your faith. It establishes your faith, actually. And then you'll begin to lord over him like the God or the master he has created you to do. He's created us to be masters over the enemy. We're like a God to him. Well, when you got your armor on, you got your robe on, you can't, he can't tell who you are in there. He, for all he knows, he thinks you're God because it's God's armor. It's God's robe you put on. Amen. So righteousness, even though we've been made righteousness, we may not have been establishing it. This is one of, this is the, the, uh, the key that unlocks the New Testament. It's the principal subject of the whole New Testament. If you get a handle on this, it'll unlock the mysteries of the rest of it. Now, as I get, again, as I said, it is much more than just having rights and privileges. It is, it also, it's, well, it's a life and the nature of God, but it also is a spiritual force that goes to work. Just even now, as you're hearing these words, and if you would receive them and let them get down in your heart, 
it, it's beginning to work. It's already doing its part. The word works. When you submit to God or you submit to his word, it will begin to strengthen you on the inside. Look at here in Isaiah 32, 17. I'm going to read to you something. The work of righteousness will be peace. What is peace? This is the work of it. It's creating in you peace. What's, well, whole, shalom, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. There's your healing right there. There, there is a, you're missing nothing. There's your provision. There's your protection. It goes on to say, the effect of it, the outward, the effect of righteousness will be quietness and assurance forever. See, you're assured you're dwelling in that secret place. You're assured that the life of God is healing you, protecting you, restoring you. He says in verse 18, my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation. In secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. The, now, see, we're in a storm right now. The pandemic is going on, right? He says, though the hail comes down on the forest and the city is brought to, to low humiliation. See, we are protected. We're dwelling in that secret place. How is it? It's the work of righteousness. See, so I'm teaching you Psalms 91. I'm, I'm establishing it in you through righteousness. Righteousness has a work. I mean, you think about it. Remember, I gave you the, the, uh, the example of, of a king and he's in this, in the courts of a king and a commoner happens to be sitting in there that commoner has no right or privilege in there nothing he says will be heard or recorded unless he points that scepter of righteousness at him and says i'm going to hear what he has to say and what he has to say is going to now be recorded and i'm going to hear him on my level see that's what god's doing he's calling us up to his level he is righteous he is the righteous judge. He's righteous in all his ways. This is, so God's calling us up to him. And, but then God even does more than that. He puts us, he says, here's a robe, put it on. Son, he's given you a robe of righteousness. And he, he's calls us to sit with him. So he puts on the robe and to sit with him in heavenly places, right? And now he wants to show us how to live in these places. Well, what if the guy, the commoner, wants to keep the commoner mentality? I'm just a servant. You know, I'm unworthy of all this. I, I you know, see, his fellowship's already severed. Kings don't fellowship with commoners, man. Kings fellowship with kings, right? But see, he's not going to walk in what's been given him. He's never, he's never going to assume the authority or walk in the ability and uh, that, that the king has given him. Well, that's the same thing that's happened with us Christians. We've not assumed our place. We've not stood up and say, okay, I'm going to put on this robe with it, even though I don't feel like it. Because, it's, because, see, we remember our past. We know where we came from. But it has nothing to do with our past. It has nothing to do with where we came from. It has to do with what God has done and what he's given us through Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with our conduct. As I said before, it's not something we earn. It's something that we just receive by faith. So you receive that rope. Say, well, I don't feel unrighteous. I don't feel righteous. Well, just put it on. It's not by feeling. It's by faith. See, by being more aware of my past and my conduct and trying to earn a place and position in God, that's what Paul was talking about over in Romans 9. He said the Jewish people of his time they're trying to establish their own righteousness through the law, through conduct, trying to earn it. He said that they're not submitting to the righteousness of God. And I would encourage you, just submit to the righteousness of God. Like Paul, Paul got the revelation of it. He said over there in Philippians 3, he said, I'm not working to establish my own righteousness. I'm forgetting that, all that. He said, I'm pressing on for the righteousness of God that I might know him. See, the fellowship opens up when you begin to receive this robe of righteousness and put it on. You know, the Israelites, they were delivered out of Egypt. We've been delivered 
from the powers of darkness over there in Colossians 12. 112, we, we've been delivered from the powers of darkness. Translated into king, the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. Right? But that took a whole new generation before they even walked, before the Israelites even entered into the promised land. The ones that were delivered never got out. Why? Never got into the promised land. Never walked in their inheritance. Because they had the condemnation or the sin conscience. Let me say it. A condemning conscience we're unworthy. There were like grasshoppers to them. See, inadequate, unworthy, fearful. That's the reciprocal of a righteousness consciousness. Hey, I'm with God. He's in me. He's for me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me. Joshua and Caleb, they were of a different spirit. They had a right, and their faith was released. They went in. They were the only two that I'm aware of, I can think of now, that went into the promise and inherited. And this is the same thing that's happened to us today. We are supposed to be, the Christians, the body of Christ, supposed to be in the authority, ruling, and governing in this earth. Well, we have. Well, we felt like my voice don't mean nothing. I don't need to stand up for this or that because they ain't going to do nothing. We've done the same thing. We've not walked in our inheritance. That's the reason there's, there's, uh, there's abortions going on. There's, there's sexual and immoral sins going on because we did not stand up and uh, take our government, assume our place and our privilege to govern this earth and to rule and reign as kings in life. Well, it's the same force, the consciousness that's keeping us out of our inheritance. Because when righteousness is established in you, you'll stomp your foot and stand and stand up and say, hey, I'm not putting up with this no more. I'm not going to stand for Satan bringing sickness into my house. He has no right here. See, and you become sickness's master. You become Satan's master when you stand up and assume because God will respond. Remember, whatever we Loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, whatever we bind on earth. See, God's waiting us to stand up and assume our rights and privileges so the word will work. Glory to God. There's your healing. There's all that. In Isaiah 50, 50, uh, 33, 5 says, He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. The honor or the fear of the Lord is his treasure. That opens up a whole new thought right there. Romans 5, 17. Through this gift, those who, who have, I'm going to turn into it. I don't want to misquote it. Those who have received the abundance of grace. Let me find it here. 5, 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned through one much more. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will rule in life. Will rule. I apologize. I missed, got it messed up. The abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Christ, Jesus Christ. Did you notice that? Who gets the grace? What is the, the gift of righteousness and the gift of the abundance of grace. Did you know you can get more grace? Yeah, they, over there, though God resists the proud, but gives what? More grace to the humble. So just, just be humble and submit yourself. Receive the gift of righteousness. Let it, be, let it develop in you till you become bold as a lion. The righteousness are bold as a lion, not proud and arrogant. No, it's a strength. It's the backbone of your faith. It's the backbone of your, of your inheritance, man. You're bold. You're standing up like Joshua and Caleb. Give me the mountain. That's Calebville over there, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what this righteousness will do to you. It opens the door to your faith so you can begin to walk in your inheritance. Forgetting, that's why, well, the main reason I'm teaching righteous is because God told me to. But the second reason is because I'm laying an axe at the root to uproot this sin consciousness, this condemning consciousness, this unworthy consciousness. Righteousness is the foundation of your faith, man. You got to get this established. You can't be try expecting to receive something you un if you're unworthy. 
Hosea 4, 6 says his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they've rejected it. Don't reject what I'm trying to teach you and establish in you, build up in you. See, because recording that verse there, revealed knowledge is the rock. Remember, there were two people over there in Matthew 12. Jesus said, built their house, one on the sand, one on, one on a rock. Well, they both built a house. That means every one of us are building a house, but one of us is doing it on our own righteousness or our own unworthiness, or one of us is building it on the righteousness, the rock of the revelation of the plan of redemption. God has made us the righteousness of God. So let righteousness become a rock and established as a rock in your life. Amen. In Proverbs 21, it says 21, 21, I believe it is, he says, he who follows after righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. So I'm going to continue to teach you about righteousness. And I'm going to go back and begin to show you how to uproot and how to weaken the unrighteous consciousness that's down inside of us, the what's been ingrained in us, because how we've been trained up. It's how it would be. Jesus said, you train a man, or the word says, train a, train a child up in the way to go and he won't depart for it. I know for myself, I've seen some things, I'm not speaking bad or negative about my parents. None of us are perfect. They did their good. They were good parents. But they, there were things that, there's certain one particular thing, man, I could not stand. It was, it was awful. It was unright. I didn't like it. But, I was trained up in it, and then I found myself in an older age doing the exact same thing as much as I despise it, and it took me a while. I mean, I'm talking about several years to uproot it and get, why? Because it was ingrained in my consciousness. See, that's what this sin consciousness, this condemnation is done to, the, to everybody on this earth because we've been under, underneath of a sin nature ruler. So I'm going to continue to tell you how to weaken that and uproot it and to establish and strengthen righteousness in you. Amen. Well, God bless you. Peace be with you. And may the force of righteousness be on you and in you. Amen.